Hey Sainers, welcome back to the Saints TV YouTube channel. Welcome to the round six, five things we learned. Thanks to Mornington Peninsula for being a sponsor of this series. Um, not going to be a good one today. Number one, and I just want to cover this one because I know a lot of people are bringing it up and I, I do tend to agree a little bit, but I don't like using excuses. Number one, three games in 11 days, two of which are interstate is not ideal, it is not fair fixturing. The AFL are always terrible with this sort of thing and it goes around to a lot of different clubs, not just us. I believe the Dogs played pretty much the same, three games in 11 days. They did play in Melbourne last week, but that is no excuse, I don't think, for the performance last night. They're professional footballers, they are the fittest people going around. And last week was a 48 minute flight to Canberra that I was on, it's not a huge trip. Four-day break is not great, but that's just what happens. You know, Ross Lyons' motto is anywhere, anytime, but apart from last night on a Thursday night at Marvel. Go figure. Number two, our youth is good, but it's not great, not yet. For me, I think maybe we jumped the gun with a few of these players in the off-season, put a bit too much unnecessary pressure on their shoulders to become absolute A graders this year. Mainly Naz, Filippo, Owens, mainly those three. Um, even Darcy Wilson, I think we're starting to put a bit more pressure on him. Garcia, he had a good quarter last week. He got a good game in last night. But again, we just need to park, park the sort of expectations on them and let them develop. It's going to take time. They're going to have ups. They're going to have downs. We still haven't found the right mix. Uh, on top of that, Caminiti. Um, you know, there's there's just so much youth coming through this team. Win Hager. So they're good, but they're not great. They'll get there. I really do believe they'll get there. But we're going to have games like last night where they're not clicking. And that's up to our leaders to step up. And if they don't step up, we, f we see games like last night. Um, very important point there, I think. Number three... Maybe this was somehow expected. And I don't say that because I went into this game thinking that I tipped us. I thought we'd win by a couple of goals. I thought it'd be a tight affair, but we'd get the job done. Um, but Ross Lyon, prior to the game, uh, he was interviewed and he said he was nervous. And a lot of people picked up on this and thought, well, that's very odd. Why is Ross Lyon, out of all people, saying he's nervous before a game? doesn't really bode well. You know, you want to exude confidence, which he generally does. But to say he's nervous means that he knew something that we didn't. And then during the week, I didn't really pick up on this until obviously after the game, but it was another coincidence, was the president's email. You know, telling people to get to the game, to your night. Basically reiterating an expectation that maybe we all forgot. Maybe we all, again had higher expectations than maybe internally what the club has. And that letter from Andrew Bassett kind of explained that to everyone. Um, currently, where we know where we're at. Um, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. Last night was a big down. Um, but again, maybe there was a hint of fatigue, of mental, you know, mental strain over the last three weeks. It's been a big three weeks, I know that. A young squad. I think we're bottom four for age at the moment because we've got a lot of senior players out and we're playing a lot of youth, but maybe there was something there that we, uh, we kind of missed. Number four, our mid and forward mix is still not defined yet. Machida Owen still didn't really get a run in the midfield last night and we were getting battered. Put him in there. Forward of centre. We have no idea what we're doing, especially when Max King's not there. Jack Higgins was in the back pocket at times. Dan Butler was subbed off. I think he's done his hammy now. Um, which is a shame. Caminiti battled hard, but Sharman was floated back on the wing, up forward. There was just no consistency. And unfortunately for me, the biggest, the biggest thing that I really didn't like was that Tim Membry only really got going when the game was done. He's a senior player. He kicked his two or three, but they were junk time goals. We need you early in the game. That mix is just not right yet. The, we have no presence at ground ball. They walked it out. And in the midfield, unless Rowan Marshall is really clearing the ball and getting 16 clearances a game on his own, we're not getting clean clearances to hurt the opposition. And number five, maybe controversial, maybe not, but I feel like it's worth noting. 
Last night was unacceptable, but we can't overreact. We can't, I've seen already posts of people saying, I'm done, I'm canceling my membership, I'm never going to a game again. I know it's all very much emotional, 24 hours after a game, but we cannot overreact. This is a different squad to what Ratten had, to what Waters had. I know the performance itself reminded me and reminded a lot of you of those bad, dark times. I get that. But this is a different squad. This is only the second time in 30 games of Ross coaching, uh, Ross 2.0, I should say, that we've lost by over 29 points. Our average losing margin this, this year has been very small. Last year, it was very small. We just need to learn to kick more goals and get our best team on the park. We're still missing Mason Wood, Liam Henry, Max King last night, Paddy Dow, Hunter Clark. We cannot ignore the importance of Brad Crouch in that midfield. He is the extractor. We have none of that at the moment. We're putting Windy, Filippo, Ross, and Steele in there. That is not a good enough midfield. So we need to get some of these important players back, which I, I hope we do in the next couple of weeks. And once we get that stronger 22 on the park, then I'll be able to really judge where we're at. Right now, it's very difficult when we've got so many players missing and so many youngsters playing. Uh, I love the youngsters playing, but at the same time, you are going to sacrifice some level of performance to get games into the youth, to get them up to speed over the next couple of years. So as much as it was unacceptable, I just don't want to overreact. I'm going to give them this one as an aberration, and I'm going to judge them over the next three weeks. We've got Port, very difficult, unlikely to win, and then North Hawthorne, I believe. The next three weeks is very, very important for us and how we go about the rest of the season. On that note, Sainers, I'm going to leave it there. Put your five key learnings in the comments. I really appreciate them every week. It's probably my favorite video to make because I can just narrow down my thoughts to just the top five and hopefully you enjoy it as well. Thanks to Mornington Peninsula for sponsoring the video. Please like, comment your learnings and subscribe and I'll see you very, very soon. But until next time, enjoy the rest of your weekend and as always, go Mighty Sailors. See you guys.